What's up guys, my name is Brandon. Welcome to Quick Flicks. Today, we are covering The Purge, directed by James DeMonico, releasing in 2013. The Purge is an annual event that takes place in modern day America, where all crime, including murder, is legal for 12 consecutive hours. Why, you may ask? Well, it results in record low crime rates throughout the rest of the year, and allows for a better than ever economy. Due to the significant success of this movie, it spawned four sequels, and even a TV show. I will be covering the other four films as well, but the TV show may have to wait a little bit. Anyways, I'll stop wasting your time, let's hop into the movie. The movie opens up with text on screen about how America is currently thriving, with unemployment being at 1% and crime being at an all-time low, due to the new founding fathers of America creating the purge, an annual 12-hour period where all crime, including murder, is legal. We then get an opening credit montage of various murders and violence taking place during the purge. This leads into our main protagonist, James, driving home to his gated community after a busy day at the office and learning that he was the top seller for security systems at his company. James is played by Ethan Hawke, who you may recognize from Sinister, the recently released The Black Phone, and is even slated to be in the upcoming Knives Out 2. He arrives home to his lovely wife, Mary, played by Lena Headey, making some dinner and listening to Perch Talk daytime television, she decides to take a break and get some air, chatting with her friendly neighbors. Miss Grace, in particular, remarks how the neighborhood is a bit resentful toward Mary and her family. You know your husband sold a new security system to almost every home in this community. You know, some people are actually saying, this neighborhood paid for that new addition on your home. Back inside, we meet the daughter of the family, Zoe, who is busy playing tonsil hockey with her boyfriend, Henry. She shortly sends him on his way, however, as James isn't really a fan of him due to their age difference. Finishing up Din Din, Mary gets spooked by her son Charlie's motorized doll, Timmy. She tells him to quit it and come eat. He leaves a secret room hidden in his closet behind some clothes and joins the family for some food, though they don't have a great time, as Zoe's bitterness toward her dad for not liking Henry is bringing them all down. They get interrupted as it's time for lockdown, they head to their home security room and reinforce the house with James's high-selling security system. The news suddenly plays the famous emergency broadcast system, announcing the commencement of the annual purge, and that all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 consecutive hours, with a few caveats, granting immunity to government officials of ranking 10 or higher and only authorizing weapons of class 4 and lower, which according to my research, class 4 is the last and highest class of weaponry, and this even includes nuclear devices. So does that mean if a civilian can manage to get themselves an atomic bomb for example, they can just drop it on the city and have no repercussions? Interesting. If I'm wrong, let me know down below. Anyway, sirens begin to blare, officially declaring the start of the purge. James then dismisses the kids, and Zoe heads to her room to be surprised by Henry, who snuck back in while the family was eating dinner. While they do some kissing, James works on rich person stuff, Mary does some purge time exercising, and Charlie drives Timmy around the house until coming across his dad's security cameras. He zooms into one and sees a strange man running around outside, grabbing his attention. He immediately runs to the room and turns up the volume to hear the man calling for help, as there are other purgers after him trying to kill him. Charlie, having a good heart, disarms the security system and calls for the man to come inside. This obviously alerts his parents, and they come over to see the strange man inside. With tensions arising, James pulls out his gun as a precaution, but actually ends up having to use it as Henry comes from behind him and starts shooting at him. James luckily dodges and wounds Henry in retaliation. Zoe, for some reason, rushes Henry up to her room and tries to take care of him, but he quickly dies. What? He just shot at your dad. Why is she even... Never mind, I'll just let it be. James notices the man is gone and takes Mary and Charlie to the security room. James wants to find Zoe and take care of the man. However, another big issue is arising as there are now quite a few purgers in front of their home. They unmute the security camera and listen to the leader who essentially says that they want the strange man in the house. It's their right to purge and they want to eliminate the homeless as they are quote, a menace to society. If they don't turn him over by the time reinforcements arrive, they're going to force their way in and kill 
them all. The power is then cut. James, wanting to protect his family, obliges, and goes to find the man while the purgers torment them from outside. Aw, look at that. They're just having fun. While James and Mary try to find the man, Charlie directs him via Timmy to his little closet secret room. Not having any luck, James goes to talk with the leader to inform him that they are trying, but their house is just too darn big. Rich people problems. The leader doesn't care much. No, like, he actually doesn't care. Give us the homeless pig, you fuck! Just keep in mind, Mr. Sandin, he was my friend, and you are not. Yeah, all he wants is the homeless man. This encourages James to find the man ASAP, and he goes on the hunt, until he comes across him holding Zoe at gunpoint. James tries to talk him down, but the homeless guy doesn't want to just go out there and get executed. I mean, rightfully so. While they try to negotiate, Mary comes from behind as a distraction, causing the man to throw Zoe, knocking her unconscious, before James tackles him and shoots him in the stomach. The parents duct tape the stranger and then tie him to a chair, but the man tries fighting back, forcing Mary to use a letter opener on the man's gunshot wound. Gosh, this is horrible. This obviously causes quite some pain to the man, and he surrenders, allowing them to tie him up. Although, with Charlie pleading for them to stop, and the man glaring at Mary, she begins to have second thoughts. Charlie runs off, with Mary following behind, and not too long after, the dazed Zoe doesn't much like what James is doing either, and also runs off. The man watches the drama unfold, and tells James to save his family, and release him to the purgers. But James has a change of heart. He catches up with Mary, and tells her that they are going to fight instead. They give Charlie a gun, and tell him to hide in the basement, while they arm themselves with some other goodies from James's stash, and head to the front door to see the purgers and their newly arrived reinforcements chaining up to the metal barricades and tearing them suckers off. James and Mary run back and split up to defend the household. We see the intruders getting inside and walking and even skipping throughout the house. One just so happens to be stalking Mary. Charlie hears the noises of crazy people laughing and shooting off guns up above him. When he gets jump scared by a purger, the scary man drags him out and gets ready to shoot him when James shows up and fires a few rounds into him. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but James's gunshot pattern here sounds an awful lot like the Terminator 2 theme. See? Doesn't it? He takes Charlie to the security room to hide him there, and once again goes out to defend his house. He makes his way into the game room, when two of the purgers also come in. James tries shooting them, but the intruders put up a decent fight. After a back and forth brawl, he finally grabs his nifty shotgun and shoots the lady. He then grabs the other dude's head and whacks it a whole bunch of times into a pinball machine, knocking him out. That's not all though. A sneaky guy breaks through the window and almost blows James's head off, but he manages to get up and axe the dude in the back before he can do any further harm. James gets up and grabs his shoddy and double taps these fools. He begins to walk out of the room when the leader turns the corner and stabs him in the tum tum. He lays James down and sweet talks him to sleep then going on about his business. The end is looking near and dear for our fellow family, with the purgers tearing the house down and getting ready to kill Mary, when Charlie notices their neighbors gunning down some of them outside. They show up just in time to even save Mary. She gets up, following behind them, and into the living room to see James wounded. Charlie also comes around, trying to make sure his dad is okay, when the lead purger shows up, ready to execute them but he suddenly gets lit up by none other than Zoe. The family gathers around and apologizes to each other for fighting over stupid small things before James actually dies. Mary thanks their life-saving neighbors until they let her in on their little secret that her and the kids are actually their prey and no one else's. They drag James's corpse away and begin to tie up the resistant family. Mary begs for mercy, but Grace informs her that due to James selling the entire neighborhood his nifty little security system and supposedly rubbing the money in their face by upgrading their house, nothing is going to change their mind, and they are going to murder them anyway. They get ready to kill Mary and the kids, pledging to the new founding fathers. But the homeless man comes to the rescue, knocking a dude out, taking Grace hostage, and mowing down another. He gets the others to drop their weapons and unties Mary and the kids. The neighbors expect to be killed any moment now, but Mary has other plans. She sits them all down at the dining table, not wanting to see anyone else die. Waiting in silence for the purge to conclude, Grace tries one last attempt at grabbing the shotgun, but Mary fights back, hitting her square in the face with the butt of the gun, and then slamming her head into the table. Ouchie. That looks like it hurts. 
Much deserved. I don't really like Grace. The siren then finally rings, ending the annual purge. The neighbors leave, the homeless man following, but not before Mary can give him her appreciation. They watch him walk out, passing the multiple corpses in their front yard, and the screen cuts to black. Let me know what you guys thought of the purge. Did you like it? Hate it? Let me know down below. Next week, we're going to be covering the 2014 sequel, The Purge Anarchy. And if you guys liked the video, make sure to drop a like and hit the subscribe button. It really does help me out. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.